Can, can you see my screen now? Yes. yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. The, his, the, the historical part of Takafut. So uh, today focus will be um, the history of Takaful during the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam times, during in the Western times, okay, and uh, the Takaful industry in Malaysia uh, globally, and also the future of Takaful industry, okay. Okay, so uh, Takaful basically the the concept. Uh, takaful is uh, have been practiced during the prophet times okay through the system of al akilah okay al akilah systems or or system of kabila kabila is a group systems uh, the the traveler they want to if they want to migrate from one place to another place they are migrating not alone but in a groups okay uh, in a group, basically 20 or 30 people, sometimes 50 in a group, okay. So in that uh, context through al akila so every member involved in the system, uh, in the group, agreed that in the event any members of the tribe were killed inadvertently by a member of another tribe, okay, one group, there are many groups, eh? there are many groups, but if one member of uh, group A is killed by one member from group B, there must be a compensation to be remunerated, to be paid to the heirs of the victims of group A. Okay, there must be a remuneration. So, ni ganti rugi ya, uh, paid to the, the the victims or the the heirs. If the victims uh, was killed, so the heirs lah, the family members will receive the remuneration. Okay, so for that purpose, uh, so every member of the tribe has to contribute. Okay, uh, so they have to contribute a portions of uh, money, lah, small portions of money, like a monthly. Okay, pay ten thousand, uh, ten ringgit, for example. That money we call dia or blood money. Eh, dia or blood money. Uh, like uh, in Malaysia, we call system kutu or in a Korea or in a village, uh, even uh, if we have a mosque, the mosque will open ask the villagers, okay, uh, to pay uh, the, the res uh, resident, uh, the res resident or the villagers to pay um, tabung khairat kematian, like uh, uh, 50 ringgit per year. Okay, so for one family, let's say in Malaysia, that's the practice, like one family just to pay 50 ringgit. If uh, you die, so the most, eh, the most in this case will use, uh, we take a portion of the pool money from other villages, eh, from other residents to pay for any uh, cost uh, during the, to, apa, to bury eh, uh, the, the victims. Lah, eh. So in this case, in the Akila systems, it also seems all member need to pay a small portion of money. So the leader will collect the money and pull it. If anything happens, they will use the money to pay for the compensation. Okay. So in the hadith, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, anhu narrates, he said that once two women, this one the case that happens during the prophet times, eh, uh, from Huzail, Huzail is one of the groups, lah, uh, okay, clash when one of them hit the other with a stone, which killed her and the fetus in the victim's womb. Eh. So the heroes of the victim brought an action to the court of the holy prophet. At that time, uh, the prophet uh, becomes a judge eh, who gave a verdict that what Rasulullah said, the compensation for the fetus to be a male or female slave, while the compensation for the victim woman is a blood money. Uh, money lah in terms of monetary and in terms of slaves. Uh, because um, at that time, slave is very important to assist uh, the family. Uh, so it becomes a slave lah, not only money. Okay, so that money we call dia to be paid by the akilah of the killer who kill the victim, so uh, they should pay. Uh, the Akira is the group lah, the group uh, of the killer ni need to pay using the dia or the blood money. Okay, this is a hadith sahih. Eh? Hadith sahih. That's uh, 
uh, the, the story that has happened during the prophet times. So this system is actually um, uh, mirror or uh, mirror lah to the systems of Takaful. Whereby in the Takaful, okay, as a participant, we pay contribution monthly based on the scheme, not even monthly or yearly or quarterly based on the scheme that we participate. So in the event that we actually accidentally uh, or uh, we hit others, uh, so our Takaful or the operator will use the money to pay for the victims. Okay, so the money or Takaful benefit Okay, we call it as a dia lah, blood money. That's the blood money and the contribution. Okay, they pay in the takaful system. Okay, and then from the Western history and the 14th century, okay, this one after the prophet times lah. Eh? So in the 14th century, so the European government uh, actually uh, have uh, apa nama dia, offered uh, insurance protections to secure the maritime trade for trading to secure all the the goods all the upper the machinery the maritime trades and then also for the social benefits okay the two uh, protections like during the times this one conventional insurance for social benefit uh, mainly for death benefit okay and then this one to secure the the trade the trading yeah and then in the roman empire uh, the systems of uh, insurance uh, is practiced to arrange a burial clubs in case of the death of its citizen, death benefit, and also to protect the military suppliers from uncertainties such as pillaging by the storms. Huh? Okay, uh, so for military, for the maritimes, and also for social benefit, death benefit, that's the main uh, aims of the conventional insurance uh, in the Western history. And uh, in the 19th century, the objective of insurance changed from being socially oriented to being a profit oriented. Okay, now the company, the insurance company, they do not only uh, uh, prepare for protections for the participants, for the customer, but at the same time, they also uh, aims to achieve a more profit by uh, what you, investing the money that they collected from the customer. Okay, they becomes a profit oriented. So the social benefit will become uh, has become number two. The first one is profit oriented. Eh? So because of the spirit of individualism, materialism, and strong competitiveness aroused during the Western period, because not only one company but many companies have offered the insurance at that time. So the greedy capitalists transformed the insurance practice from once being in the best interest of society to the best interest of individuals. So only to achieve their their aims, which is uh, they make a lot of investments, okay, regardless Sharia comply with comply with the Sharia or or not, okay. So that is why the product that they uh, they offered uh, mainly it is not fair enough to cater for the social benefits of the customer, but they are uh, uh, only uh, wanted to achieve more profit. Uh, so unfair lah. Uh, the weightage more to their side, okay. That's the practice of uh, conventional insurance. Uh, that's basically uh, uh, um, uh, becomes the practice that have three prohibited elements: riba, gharar, and and maizir. The gambling element is there. Huh? Uh, riba investment non sharia compliance. Uh, riba gharar and and maizir. Gharar based on the contract itself. It is not clear. Uh, so they manipulated, they hide certain charges uh, because they wanted to achieve uh, more profit eh, from the business. Okay, so that is why increase in demands towards uh, fair uh, insurance uh, concepts. Okay, uh, moreover, demanded by the Muslim to have a Sharia compliant of uh, uh, insurance contract. Okay. So, and then insurance practice have come to be associated with negative elements, gambling, interest and uncertainty, riba, gara and maizir, which are deemed impermissible according to the Islamic law. So, after that, uh, 
because of uh, increase in demand. So the first Islamic forms of insurance successfully emerged in Sudan. Eh, the first uh, insurance, uh, insur or the first takaful lah, uh, Islamic insurance kan. Because takaful is Islamic insurance. So the first takaful is uh, established in Sudan, known as Sudan Islamic Insurance Company. At that time, the words, the term takaful is not appear yet eh. So they, they do not use the term takaful. So Islamic insurance, Islamic uh, practice of insurance or insurance practice based on the Islamic principle. Okay, uh, known as Sudan Islamic Insurance Company in 1979. And after that, at the same year in Saudi Arabia, uh, they uh, offered, uh, they started Arab Islamic Insurance Company still the term insurance is used. Eh? And then uh, one year after that in 1980, uh, okay, United uh, UAE, eh? so the Islamic, uh, the Islamic Arab Insurance Company also established. Eh? And then after that in Switzerland in 1981, in UK, United Kingdom in 1982, Okay, because in United Kingdom or Switzerland, there are also uh, uh, Muslim populations quite uh, uh, huge like, over there. Huh? So, uh, and then in Bahrain in 1983, Bahrain Islamic Insurance Company, uh, and then renamed as Tagaful International. Eh? So, in 1980s, where the term Tagaful is started. Uh, to be used uh, to represent Islamic insurance company. Okay, uh, Takaful International in Bahrain. How about in Malaysia? When Takaful is started? What is the first Takaful operator in Malaysia? Anyone know? Ah, you don't know? Okay, let me share. Okay, yeah. Okay, so in Bahamas, ah yes, brother. Syarikat Takaful Malaysia Berhad. Ah, Syarikat Takaful Malaysia Berhad, STMB. The first Takaful operator in, in Malaysia. Okay, ah, ni. Established in 1984. Okay, so in 80, so 80s, uh, 1980s uh, is uh, where, is, is the year where Takaful uh, operator or Takaful company is started to image. Uh, increase increase in number of takaful operator in the world. Okay, not only in Malaysia, not only in Middle, Middle East, but in the world. Also at the uh, Western countries. Huh? So Bahamas in 1983, Luxembourg 83, Sudan 84, more company, and then Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia in 1983, Bahrain and Malaysia in 1984. So Saudi Arabia in 1986, Turkey. Uh, after that lah, huh? okay so so far these are the I think this one is a statistic uh, statistic I think few years back uh, nowadays there are many more huh? so um, okay okay now let's concentrate with uh, Takafu industry in Malaysia okay so uh, how it is emerged so it is from the results of the meeting by Malaysian National Fatwa Committee uh, since 1972. Then 10 years after that, 10 years and more, okay. Um, uh, okay, 10 years after that, so the first Takaful company is established. 10 years before it is established, so the, the National Fatwa Committee uh, did a, a meeting. Eh? So the committee considered conventional insurance a void there are firms that uh, conventional insurance is a void contract because it involves elements uh, riba, gharar and maizir. Okay? And also because of increasing in demand by the Muslim in Malaysia to have Sharia compliant insurance. So before, two years before it is established, Bank Negara Malaysia is actually established a speci special task force to investigate uh, how how uh, Islamic types of uh, insurance business uh, can be offered. So how the, the mechanism, the contracts, so overall how the products should be uh, structured according to the, to the Islamic uh, principle. Okay. 
So the idea is proposed in 1982. So only after two years after that, the first Takaful uh, company is, is established and also the first Takaful Act was enacted at the same year. So the, this uh, Takaful Act 1984 is the first Takaful Act uh, established uh, by Malaysian governments uh, in the world. The first Takaful of, uh, Act in the world is Takaful Act 1984. Okay, so at that times, no other Takaful Acts. Okay, even though they have uh, established many companies, but they are not governed by a special uh, act of Takaful to the business. So we can say that uh, which act that they are actually followed at that time, isn't it? Uh, since, uh, especially in Sudan. Uh, so which act? Which is the conventional act. Because no other Takaful Act. Okay, uh, uh, maybe uh, part of uh, investment they just follow the sharia compliant investment and then they try to be fair in uh, structuring the products okay but no act no special takaful act governs by their business takaful business okay and then in malaysia after stnb in 1984 so six years after that in 1990s the first Takaful operator is, eh, the second Takaful operator is established, which is known as Takaful National Sunjian Berhad. Uh, is the company still, uh, apa nama dia? Um, still operated? Anyone knows? Takaful National? Uh, so, no. Takaful, yeah? No. Ah, so Takaful National or known as Etika. Okay, Etika Takaful is previously as is a Takaful National Sendirian Berhad, eh, Etika. Oh. Uh, Etika is the, uh, Takaful National is the, the, the second one, okay. And Takaful National become the first Takaful that operate based on agency system. Uh, so, STNB is not operate based on agency. They have no agents at that time so for STNB. Even nowadays, their, their business model is not rely on agents. That is why we are rarely to see agents of STNB. They rely, basically, their, their target is uh, group takaful. Uh, and then, uh, they uh, the business model is based on branch. If we want to uh, subscribe to uh, Takaful products offered by STNB, uh, either two, we go to the branch or we go to their website. They have online uh, Takaful product offered in the website. Okay. Uh, but other, other Takaful operator like uh, Etika pun, I think, are very rare nowadays. Uh, they are, uh, have changed their business model slightly. Maybe uh, Great Eastern Takaful, uh, AIA, uh, or apa lagi dia? The one that is famous um, that many agents we can see in the market. Great Eastern. Ah, uh, Great Eastern, AIA, uh, CIMB Aviva pun. CIMB Aviva is changed to Sun Life Takaful. Okay, so the first uh, Takaful operator that operate based on agency is Takaful National, not STMB. Eh? So the formation of the Asian Takaful Group and Asian Re Takaful International also is done in 1990. Asian Re Takaful International, eh? same year. So starting 2000 until 2010, the industry further enhanced its Takaful branches and agents. Uh, about 124 Takaful branches and 4,000 agents. So, 8 Takaful operators and 4 re Takaful operators in uh, 2010. Okay, 2010 lah. Okay, this one since 2010. Um, okay, so the chronology of events of the Malaysian Takaful industry since 1982, Task Force 1984, the first Takaful operator, 1984, the first Takaful Act, 1985, STMB commenced operations. Uh, one year after that, the commenced operations offered the products. And 1988, Bank Negara Malaysia entrusted with the regulatory supervisory role over the insurance and takafu industries. 88, huh? that uh, Bank Negara uh, Capu Tangan. Uh, Bank Negara becomes uh, the, the controller uh, that have power over the 
takkan food industries eh. Until now, uh, all the acts uh, to govern the takkan food business in Malaysia is prepared by Bank Negara Malaysia and currently we have IFSA, uh, Islamic Financial Services Act 2013 uh, uh, offered by Bank Negara okay and that IFSA 2013 is actually replaced uh, take over lah, override the Takaful Act 1984. Okay, so nowadays Takaful Act 1984 is no longer being exercised lah in the market. Okay, uh, so if so, is actually a combination of um, apa, to govern Takaful as well as banking business in Malaysia. Yeah. Okay, so October 1993. Okay, I think this one you can read later on. So this one, the establishment of uh, Takaful operators in Malaysia. Like say 2003, Takaful Ikhlas commenced operations. Uh, uh, 2001, launching of the financial se sector master plan. Okay. So Takaful uh, operations in Malaysia, they actually have to follow IFSA first and they have a TOF, Takaful Operational Framework. Takaful operational framework mainly for uh, Takaful business, not a banking business. Okay, they have a special uh, framework uh, for the Takaful business. And to, to ensure uh, governance of Takaful business, uh, I think 2019, uh, last year, Bank Negara have um, uh, offered in the market uh, Sharia uh, SGF previously, Sharia Governance Framework SGF 2010 but in 2019 that SGF 2010 is uh, enhanced further so Ben Negara uh, issue uh, Sharia Governance Policy SGPD, uh, Sharia, Sharia Governance Policy Document Okay, to govern both bank and takaful uh, business. Okay, so this, uh, I think I need to, this one, uh, not this year, uh, last few years, but uh, this year, there are, um, I think, significant changes in the number of takaful operator uh, that operate in Malaysia uh, because of COVID-19. Okay, uh, slightly change lah, slight, slightly and significant lah, change. Uh, uh, like say they, um, okay, before that, uh, actually in IFSA 2013, okay, uh, in IFSA 2013, uh, there is a clause that uh, ask the Takaful operator uh, to separate their business, eh, to separate their business. Uh, like previously, uh, they have a composite Takaful operators family takaful operators and re takaful operator. Composite takaful operator is actually the operators that offer two types of product, family and general takaful. Whereby family takaful operators that only offer family takaful products. Okay. So in IFSA 2013, I, I can recall which, uh, which, uh, which para. Okay. Uh, it is a requirement uh, by Bank Negara since 2008, uh, 13 eh, uh, for Takaful operator to separate him, to separate their business uh, and then if they want to offer both business for the composite, they want to maintain with two businesses, they have to open the second business like a subsidiary. Okay, uh, so this composite now, they, uh, they have to decide whether they want to focus on the uh, family business or focus only uh, general business. If they want to stick with two businesses, the second business should be subsidiary and they have to appoint one more CEO for that subsidiary. And then uh, also task force, everything need to be separated. Okay. And then because of IFSA 2013, there are changes of uh, the, the, not the model, the structure of Takaful operators. Some of them continue with their businesses, two business, and they open a subsidiary. Like a main uh, business, the main company is general, subsidiary is family. Or the main is family, the subsidiary is general. Okay, two CEOs, two board of directors. Okay, uh, and then two Sharia department but uh, because of it's, it is not easy to to separate everything, Bank Negara give them um, uh, 
uh, option to share the same syariah department lah. But uh, CEO and board of director need to be separated. Okay, uh, I think I will share with you lah later on uh, which one of the takaful operator that have uh, run two uh, both businesses and then have a parent and subsidiary and which one of the, there are also takaful operators that sold their business to the other operator and they just concentrate on one business only. Okay, uh, the other merger and acquisitions is happen. Okay, and then in IFSA, Bank Negara give five years since 2013, Bank Negara give operators five years to commence a new business. Eh? So 2013 time uh, plus five years, 2018, they have to come up with their decisions. And now 2020, they already, uh, they already, they already uh, operate, operated their business based on uh, this, the directions of to separate their, their businesses, general and, and family. Okay, why Benegara us uh, give that direction? Because of, um, because if they offer both, uh, the risk, the risk of uh, combining uh, both types of risk fund because for uh, general takaful there will be a risk fund for general takaful family takaful there will be a risk fund for family takaful so if they offer both uh, risk to combine if any of the risk fund having shortage they cannot simply that uh, take uh, the risk fund that have surplus they cannot combine both businesses at the same time okay to to eliminate this one to happen so that is why Bank Negara wanted them to separate. So later on their, their annual report also separate between parents and subsidiary. Okay. Okay, uh, this one market penetration uh, until 2014. Uh, we can see here increase in market penetration. Uh, nowadays I can, I just expect uh, 2000 20 the penetrations are uh, slightly lower but uh, uh, if uh, 2019 maybe uh, quite high maybe about uh, 17 to 18 uh, increase in penetration rate what is penetration rate penetration rate is the number of populations uh, okay uh, penetration rate is the number of uh, this, this one number of policies in force how many policies of takaful that have been taken uh, divided by the total populations of Malaysia. Okay, we have total population, we have number of policies. So only 14% of the total populations of Malaysia that have taken takaful to protect their, their race. It is not, it's still very small. You see, not only half, not only 20%, only a few percent. Uh, insurance, uh, 41, still 41. It is quite uh, uh, better than Takaful but uh, the increase is not much meaning that Takaful, uh, Takaful industry still have opportunity to bid with the conventional insurance okay okay so uh, this one I think uh, statistic lah for the life or family Takaful segment the there are three players that nominated the Takaful Great Eastern, AIA and Prudential. Nowadays the percentage is different, change, already change. Yeah? And then for General Takaful, the combined market share of the top five insurers is 47%. Uh, this one, uh, apa nama dia? Uh, combined lah Takaful and conventional insurance. So, uh, Arm General, Alliance, MCIC, uh, Etika and uh, AXA. Eh? So fa family takafu this one uh, general market share. This one and then family takafu the top players are eh? the life segment. Uh, this one combine uh, life and family. Okay, uh, between this one Great Eastern conventional insurance. Ada kan? Uh, so prudential. Okay, uh, so in combine the top three is not from takaful eh? but uh, for concentrate on family takaful only so etika is number one stnb number two and then other key players include takaful ikhlas prudential bsn takaful 
to bid with the conventional insurance, uh, the careful operator is not there yet. Okay, this one based on few years back, the statistic. Okay, uh, because I forgot to update the, the slide. Okay, I will share with you the current slide. Uh, okay, later. Huh? So the key players for general takaful include Etika. Etika is still number one eh? because they they are their, their group uh, company is uh, Maybank. Okay, uh, so Maybank uh, is a, a stable and uh, we can see is a giant uh, bank lah, giant group in Malaysia. So syarikat Takaful Malaysia, MAA and Takaful is e class. Okay, these are the, the top players uh, previously in the Takaful industry. Okay, uh, global gross Takaful contributions by region. Okay, so we have here until 2013 eh, this one 2013. Uh, who dominated Saudi Arabia and Malaysia eh? Saudi Arabia and Malaysia contribute nearly 44% of total gross takaful contributions okay uh, Saudi and, and Malaysia okay global gross takaful contribution by regions uh, okay Asian this one Asian increasing eh? increasing Saudi also increasing. Second one, GCC countries. Okay. Uh, so, and then the rest. Uh, we can see increasing in trend. Okay. Of the Takafu industry contribution. Eh? And then Asian gross Takafu contributions by country. Uh, Malaysia, Indonesia and others. So, in Asian, in, uh, in Asian country, Malaysia dominated followed by Indonesia. Okay. Uh, okay, focus uh, is about the same Saudi Arabia and followed by Asian country. Asian country mainly from Malaysia and Indonesia. Okay. So international connectivity, this one the future lah, the future of Takaful. So international connectivity, mutual recognitions of Sharia interpretations and enforcement, we still need uh, the uh, uh, the same throughout the world. Uh, how they interpret the takaful, okay? How they interpret the um, uh, the the concept of tabarum, okay? Because uh, and then the act also need to have a, a one act that govern the whole takaful business around the world. But nowadays it, it's very hard to to achieve even in banking sector, in other sector, uh, all uh, countries is basically come up with their own uh, rules and regulations, okay? And then intensify development of international best practice and uh, this one that I mentioned just now and clarity of Takaful as protection products. Uh, Takaful is a, this one uh, we relate to the awareness of Takaful. Okay, protection product or investment product. Okay, nowadays to sell a Takaful products or the, the salesperson, the agents, they are targeting more sales. So they sell the Takaful product as becomes uh, as an investment product. Yeah? Uh, so the main objective is left behind. Yeah? And universally accepted legal regulatory, uh, regulatory tax and accounting treatment of, of Takaful. Okay? So for accounting treatment uh, at international levels, we have uh, IFRS, International Financial uh, Services uh, Standard. And then in Malaysia, Malaysia basically follow IFRS but we make it as MFRS, Malaysian Financials. Eh? And then we have also our fee, uh, that's um, uh, the standards that prepared by the Middle East. Uh, but in Malaysia, only adopt MFRS, okay. Uh, the accounting standard for, for Takaful. Okay, so that's all for the history of, of Takaful. Okay. So, any question? No. Any question, class? No. I'm not sure if this are actually related to the historical part. But, uh, is it okay if hmm. the uh, Islamic insurance company hmm. the aim is to uh, maximize profit? Uh, to uh, when the when the uh, uh, produce insurance product, become insurance product, their aim is to get profit. Is it okay to do that? Or mm -hmm. the aim must be because of social, uh, to help the 
the community. Hmm, nothing wrong with that because takaful or insurance is a business. It is a business. How to sustain it? Uh, because takaful operator as a ta trustee that operate the takaful fund on behalf of the participant, they have to ensure that the fund is good enough to cater for the risk protection, isn't it? So they also have to set a target to increase a profit of the business. And then why not they involve with the investments? Uh, because we have uh, many types of investments uh, in the market and we also have a Sharia compliant investment. So all of the Takaful operators basically involve with investment but need to ensure that it is complied with the Sharia okay, so that they can generate a profit for sustainable to, sus to sustain the, the business of, of Takaful. Uh, but at the same time, they need to ensure that their, their service, their product is fair enough to cater for the society needs. Uh, let's say, for example, the, the, the price of the products uh, in terms of pricing, they cannot offer very high price. And then they also uh, need to offer micro takaful, like a very small contributions of takaful to cater for the certain groups, uh, low middle income groups. Uh, they can offer micro takaful because not only uh, not all uh, people uh, have uh, ability or have enough money to subscribe to takaful to pay one hundred or two hundred ringgit monthly, isn't it? So they have to think how to cater for the groups that have a shortage of money okay uh, the product uh, the, the the product offered need to be uh, also uh, apa namanya um, uh, achieve the the maslaha and the needs of the of the society like nowadays we have a covid-19 maybe they can structure a special products to cater for uh, this uh, scenario okay thank you sister for the questions okay any other question No question. Okay, so uh, can we uh, discuss one more topic or that's enough for today? Okay, <laughs> we would like to discuss. Okay, you can proceed ah. this one more topic. Can proceed. Okay, can proceed, yeah. Uh, okay, wait, I want to end the re recording first.